Right, today is the day I'm going to do this one day private clean. Turns out it's a rental house owned by the chap who I clean the business for over the road. Nothing to do with the parents. Um, and the last tenants just left, left it in a terrible state apparently. And they've got people in painting and decorating. So I'm going in to do a big old clean up. I think he's probably going to sell the house because managing tenancies on your own isn't easy. So I thought while I drive down, because it's only a half an hour drive, I thought that I would do a little chat as I go. don't have a huge amount to say at the moment. Um, things are ticking over rather nicely. And... I just want to say a few things about downsizing and mothballing a business. Which is easy for me to do because it's only me. I work in my back room. I don't have staff. I don't have suppliers to honour. I don't have any of that sort of stuff. My only regular outgoings are my website and my business insurance. So there's not an awful lot that I have to spend regularly to keep the business going. So I'm not hemorrhaging money. But I've been watching a couple of YouTubes. It's difficult to find small business YouTubes, like authentic ones. Kind of like the sort of thing I'm doing, but also what it's really like. It's very difficult to find people who actually talk about the numbers and talk about what it's really like trying to do that either full time or hang on, try and get out of here safely. Or on the side of another business. Maybe you work part-time, maybe you have another full-time job entirely and your part-time work kind of goes up and down. So you're never sure how busy you're going to be. And I found a new channel the other day, which was interesting. And she actually lays, she laid down all the numbers for last year. And blimey, if I was earning what she was earning, I'd be really happy but she also works a lot harder than me so ratio wise she's probably earning less because she works really hard her ex suppliers are compared to mine expensive because of what she does she doesn't do the same thing as me so it was interesting to see the numbers and and I think also post doing this universal credit meeting where they gave me my income floor, my minimum income floor that I have to hit if I was signed up for universal credit. That would be the con contract I would sign and I would agree that I would have to get close to that amount of money. And it's very close to what I, the money that I would need to make just to break even. So about 12 and a half thousand pounds a year. And that's an income floor presumably for me as a single person. And you've got to remember what's actually involved in that, me hitting that number. That means no paid for social life at all. So I don't go out, I don't go out to eat, I don't go out to the pub, I don't travel, I don't go on holiday. Which is fair enough, I don't mind that. I don't mind missing out on those things, it doesn't bother me. It's also no hot running water, it's actually having a zero uh, food spend budget 
which I don't think many people are able to do. I certainly don't have the time to do it the way I do it because I'm lucky with the amount of time I have to go and hunt for things. So when you look at it, I mean, there are certain things that I spend more on than other people probably would. Things like um, dental, um, I have business insurance, my business website. If you imagine that most people aren't running, like running a business, don't have the added expenses, whatever those added expenses might be, dickhead. Idiot. Um, but that's still hard, that's still me, I mean, the benefit system isn't supposed to be an easy system. It's designed to pay you enough to live on. It is not designed for you to have fun on. And I totally get that. But you have to be pretty strict and pretty good with yourself to be able to hit all those, those limits and get rid of all those wants rather than needs. So that was a thought that crossed my mind. I also made a very conscious decision that I have now theoretically mothballed my business until things improve. Now that I have the two extra side hustles in the cleaning work, one of which I'm doing today, and the clinical trials work, which although isn't a continuous amount of work when I do get it it's liable to be a good chunk of money so it's definitely worth the effort and even if I only got a couple of year that would be a good chunk of money and having those means that I don't have to worry or don't have to continuously think about how on earth am I going to make people buy my stuff when they have no spare money for things. I mean, I don't buy any non-essentials now, so why should I expect people to want to buy handmade jewellery, um, evening dresses, things like that? That's an unrealistic expectation at this time because prices are still going up. There's no, you know, it's not stopped. It's not gone away. And so, although the business will continue to exist, and I have it already well stocked, I don't, it's not like I'm running out of stock. I have, it's not like I don't have anything in my shop. I have lots of stuff. So it exists as a business and it still looks productive and busy and it has lots to offer if somebody wants to buy something. And occasionally they still do. But I'm not actively making stuff now unless I really feel that I want to. I'm not forcing myself to do things because... I feel that I have to be, rather than because I really want to or because someone's commissioned me to do something. So I will still make things as and when, but I don't feel under the pressure to make the money that I can't make because nobody's buying anything. So instead, this allows me to focus on the things that which take more time. So I have been doing more on the, not so much the social media, because social media is an absolute waste of time. It's a saturated market, it's really ridiculous. But there are other things that I haven't really tried properly that I am advised I probably should be. For instance, using Pinterest. I heard an interesting phrase the other day, which is that Pinterest is not a social media site, it's a search engine. And that made me think differently about it because I hadn't really realised that. I've always thought of it as social media, and apparently it isn't. And I, I quite like Pinterest. I don't use it as a shopping site, but I know lots of people do. So I've been working hard to upload lots of new pins. You can schedule pins, so I've been scheduling um, a pin a day. They reckon between one and three pins, or was it one and five pins? It's a lot, it's a lot of pins. But again, it still takes time. It'll take months for that to gain traction, months. And I've only started it in the last two weeks. So it requires me to do all the work, keep doing the work, don't think about it too much, just get on with it and then see what happens. And maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I am still trying to do this in tough times. 
so I'm doing that and reading up and just looking for YouTubes, looking for inspiration and remaining motivated but in the background because just earning the income from anywhere is the important thing right now and I'm in the position where I can afford to just take on other work it's not a problem it doesn't cause me any issues at home or with my business or with any of the other work I do because everything is really flexible which is great it's the way it needs to be so I'm enjoying refocusing a little bit on those things which are easier money and mean that the bills will be paid so that pressure is off there's no anxiety around that it's not the only thing I rely on I have I now have multiple small income streams which means if one fails to deliver or goes down or one gets busier they all fit in around each other and they all still work and I still have the option to take on more and once I've done my couple of weeks um, I'm going back down to stay with my parents for a couple of weeks as I always do every quarter when I get back from that I'm going to focus on getting some more cleaning work there are still new jobs coming through on the agency portal so I know that the chances are I can grab myself a couple of new jobs before the end of the year and they'll probably be like two hour cleans a week they won't be a huge amount but it'll it'll get me on the up and it'll give me that extra routine which is helping me to be more motivated actually and that's the other thing is that now that I'm getting out more and I'm having to organize myself and talk to people and do stuff that is having an ongoing effect on my motivation just generally because there's more going on and I have reasons to be organized and get up and do stuff that's beyond oh let's get up look at YouTube check spreadsheets and things like that so yeah I'm having to report to other people a bit more which is fine it's good it's good for me so it's all going in the right direction at the moment and positivity breeds positivity and positivity breeds good things happening and that better mindset is definitely helpful So what about the shadows? It looks like it's going to be a sunny day today. <laughs> Which is nice. Nice to be up first thing in the morning. I'm stuck at the end of the rush hour though, so this journey is ending up being a little bit longer than expected. But I've just missed the school rush, which is a good thing. But it's only, as I say, it's only half an hour away. It's not like a a proper commute or anything. I'm going to today I've never been to before I think I've driven through it probably multiple times over the years but I've never never stopped there not that I'm going to see much of it it's one of those quaint little it's a town or a village I'm not sure out in the hills pretty little stone cottages very traditional for this area. I 
time back home. Um, it took me five and a half hours to do the clean. However, I couldn't get to most of the house. Uh, the painters and decorators are there doing a fine job. They'll be done next week when I'm not going to be there. But I couldn't get to most of the rooms because they're midway painting all the rooms. They're doing it in rotation, waiting for paint to dry and then they get on to the next room. The only rooms I could get into were the kitchen, um, which was disgusting. I don't know how people can move out and leave somewhere in such an appalling state. Um, and it took me about three hours to do. Once I got stuck into it, it worked quite fast uh, and I got things cleared. It was all empty, it was just filthy. And then I went to try and do the bathroom. The bathroom basically needs to be ripped out. It's practically condemnable. I don't know how you could rent a house or sell a house with a bathroom like that. It's just absolutely disgusting. Uh, I did what I could. The previous tenants had obviously had pets there was hair everywhere, I think it was cats and the house reeked of cat wee because they were indoor cats and it reeked to high heaven Guy's already been in and shampooed all the carpets he's done a full valet of the carpets and the place just reeks and the painters have been through like almost every room so you've got the smell of paint and it's battling the smell of cats and damp because this house is actually on three floors because the, the the ground floor is actually in the basement. Because the houses are built on a really steep slope, the front is under the ground and then the back is the garden and the garden continues to drop down. So most of the basement, which is a couple of rooms that look like a couple of dungeons on the front, which is awful and are completely unusable. There's so much damp, it's just appalling. And then you've got the kitchen at the back bit, which then faces out onto the garden. And it just reeks of damp. That house must be absolute hell in the winter. I would never live in an old house again. I have lived in, I actually lived in a house very similar to that one when I first moved up this way. And I was there for a year. And it wasn't anywhere near as bad as that. But it did get quite cold. And I wouldn't live in an old house for all the money in the world because you cannot stop the damp in old houses. They're not designed for modern living. Um, and it was just hideous. The house was just awful. I think he's gonna sell it. I don't think he's gonna get very much for it because the entire place needs ripping out. The kitchen that was in there was a massive bodge job. The electrics look dangerous. Um, the units are badly put together. I don't know who did it. It's just atrocious. Whoever buys that house, is going to gut the entire thing and start again. So they're not going to want to pay much for it. And it's, I wouldn't want to live there. I would never live there. You'd have to give me a rent of about 50 quid a month to put up with living there. So I couldn't get everything done. So I've only actually done two, two rooms. And now I'm going to have to wait until after I come back from my two weeks away at my parents and then finish off. Uh, but I've already told the guy that and in actual fact, it took me five and a half hours with driving to do those two rooms but the rest of the house isn't going to be anywhere near as bad because the painters have been through and done a lot of the horrible work and the carpets are basically kind of normal again just need a quick hoover so I'm gonna to have to come back in after I get back but that probably means I've made a bit more money because I'm doing it in two two chunks and longer time I would never have got that all done in one day if it was an empty house I've been absolutely exhausted. Honestly, the way people live, it was just... I wouldn't call myself particularly squeamish, but I'm, the smell of bleach just makes me think of dirty old houses now rather than clean kitchens. It's just revolting. When you've got the smell of bleach fighting with the smell of damp and dirt and animals and just unkept stale air and badly kept property. It just makes you reach, it really does. So this is not a glamorous job, it's relatively easy. You know, you hoover, you clean, you just get on with it. And I could think of worse ways, in fact, to be making some money, but, um, oh my God, it was just gross. I'm glad that's over with. It won't ever be as bad as that again. 
at least in that house anyway. Tomorrow, I am heading off to my parents for, I think it's about 10 days. So today is packing day, giving the flat a good old clean day so that I come back and everything's nice. Um, looking forward to having a little bit of a change of scenery. I've normally I would take a lot more than this I would normally take a whole bunch of um, boxes and bags of stuff that I sell on my online stores and keep selling while I'm away but honestly it's so dead at the moment I'm just not going to waste my time I have put my vintage store in holiday mode and I've extended out all my all my Etsy online to the full date so that people can buy from me and they'll know that I will send when I get back. That means the store gets to stay open and inevitably as soon as I go away somebody buys something but at least it'll say on the order um, when I will be sending out so it's not like I've messed up the order dates because uh, that way at least I get to, to keep selling even though I'm not really there. And people are usually fine with that. So, yeah, today is packing day, getting organised, and then I will be off. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be posting while I'm down this time. I will probably get a couple of things in, but there's nothing really going on. Um, obviously, my parents are there, so I don't have the space to record at the house um, because it's a noisy, busy house, and they're not into things like this. Let's just say that if they knew I was posting my life online, I think they'd be a bit upset. So nobody I know in my real life knows I have YouTube channels, or at least not the personal YouTube channel. I keep that very separate because they don't need to know. Clear. That's it really. So I think that's going to be the end of this, this post. I've tagged this in at the end of my my previous posts about the cleaning because it just felt a bit short and a bit weird. So this is kind of like the end of and hopefully I will get to post one or two bits while I'm away. Probably woodland walks, looking around the orchard. I think I've missed apple season completely probably now. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. So that's the end of this little update not terribly interesting at the moment um, life is pretty quiet which I should be happy about we don't want any drama do we anyway speak to you soon